broke, boy, broke, boy, broke, boy, broke. La coquette, la coquette, you know who I am. FIFA 20 different and I feel like Uncle Sam. Texting all you haters cause you ain't at the fan. Call the apps to catch you cause all they do is bend. Bro, boy. Ali is what I like to choke, boy. I am just a, I am just a joke, boy. Press it, it's me, nom nom nom, I'm bok choy. Yeah, yeah, I'm a bro, boy. Leave you swimming with the fishes, I am so coy. Opposition looking funny, joke, coy. Class session, yeah, take some notes, boy. Bro, boy. Good evening, YouTube. It is your boy, One Star Week. We are back for another episode of the Broke Boy Road to Glory. And first thing I got to say, guys, is sell your house. Sell the kids. Sell sell your farm. Sell everything. The market is crashing and burning right before our eyes. I mean, as you're listening to my video right now, you've already probably lost coins. I have never seen the market in such a free fall so far in this FIFA. And this might be the biggest crash of the year. I mean... Just to illustrate um, what I'm talking about, um, yesterday, 3 p.m., as I told you guys last episode, I bought Prime Moment Sador for $1.75 million. Six hours later, he is $1.63 million. I wake up this morning, and he's barely selling for $1.4 million. I mean, just on one player in 24 hours that I bought within the 24 hours, within the market crash, I bought him. He has lost me 350,000 coins. I mean, the market is out of free fall. But um, as other YouTubers have said, if you are in this situation, don't worry. Because we're all in it together. We have all lost our fortunes um, overnight. It's it's like, a, it's, it's insane. This, this crash is insane. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I was just ranting. Um, as far as content today, EA did not really decide to drop anything. So I don't really have anything to talk about. Without further ado, I'm going to show you guys my team. So as you guys know, we are running with this team right here in the 4 triple two, And we've made a couple new signings. Um, Rodrigo, um, this is his first week starting. He's done amazing for the club. I mean, look at that. 10 assists, which is uh, pretty massive. We have Rodrigo. He's been the MVP so far. I mean, his goal record does not look too crazy there, but he's been scoring goal after goal in tight games for us, so he's been a good player. We got Seydorf, who is everything he was promised on the card and more. I'm going to be doing a review on him tomorrow, but the star of the show, the star of the episode is going to be this 92-rated Pires card. And if you're, if you're an Arsenal fan, you might be wondering, is this guy usable? Because make no mistake about it, this guy is not going to be the most meta card you can buy for this price. But if you're a fan of the player and you want to use him, if that's how you have your fun this FIFA, you just might be wondering, yo, one star, can I use this guy in the weekend league? And that's what this episode is going to be about. He's six foot two. He has high medium work rates. He's right footed with a four star, four star combination. I have played 19 games with this card um, all in the weekend league and I have five goals and four assists. Before we go any further, if you're enjoying the content, if you want to see more content like this, do me a favor, hit the like button down below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate all you guys at home for watching this video. So this Perez card might be one of the prime moments that have gotten the boost to make them um, go from unusable to usable. I mean, there's a lot of unusable or not necessarily unusable, but non-meta prime players that have gotten a big upgrade that have now been able to be used in the weekend league. Um, is this Perez one of these cards? All right. Um, he has gotten a big boost in very important areas. His dribbling, of course, which is what I'm most worried about because he's six foot two, um, looks pretty good. He has really good passing stats, his shooting, his pace. He definitely looks like a more dynamic player because if you've ever used any Perez in any FIFA, you know, his main issue is that he's nothing special. He's clunky and he's just not dynamic enough for any point of FIFA to be um, to be in my card. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into some weekend league gameplay. I'm going to let you guys know how my weekend league is going. And I'm going to let you guys know, is this Perez worth it? Let's go. All right. So according to Footbin, this Perez card is going to be selling for 400,000 coins on the PS4 market. Is he worth the money? I mean, if you're watching this video, um, I can't lie to you, man. He's not worth a 400,000. He's not a 400,000 coin player. But is he a good player? Yes. Is he a great player? No. Can you use him in the weekend league? I think if this guy's going to be not your best player, if he's an accessory attacker, I think he's going to do just fine. We're going to break down the stats so you know exactly what to expect at home. So first, we're going to talk about his pace. He has 93 pace. And in game, this is one of the things he really needed to add that extra oomph 
to add extra element to his card to make him a more, more dynamic card. You know, he now has enough pace um, to really beat the defensive line on a consistent basis. And his acceleration is very noticeable coming out of certain skill moves like the L1 fake shot and like the heel to heel. Overall, I gotta give this guy's pace a 9.5 out of 10. He definitely feels very quick in game. Next, we're gonna talk about shooting. And this is one thing that is very underwhelming stat-wise about the card. I mean, you're looking at a Prime Icon Moments card, and he only has 83 shooting, and he's an attacker. Um, how's it feeling game? And honestly, he has the important stats here and now has gotten a big enough boost to be a formidable attacker. I mean, he has 89 attack positioning, 86 finishing, and in my experience, those are the two most important stats. And on top of that, he does have the finesse shot trait. So he is very decent in front of goal. Um, the one thing I really noticed about him though is his attack positioning. It's very, very nice. It's 89 boost. It's 94 with a chem style. And his runs were very intelligent. He has a lot of things at his arsenal. I mean, he's big. Uh, he's quick, he's fairly strong, and now he has very good attack positioning. And when he's in a good position in front of the goal, he's going to finish. He has 86 finishing, he's going to finish more times than not. That being said, would I play him at the striker position? I would say no. And that's why I say this guy probably shouldn't be your best attacker. Because this guy is a good finisher, but he's not great. He lacks the shot power, which is noticeable at times. He lacks that, uh, he lacks that top end uh, long shot ability. And overall, i got to give this guy a shooting 8 out of 10. Next, we'll talk about his passing. And this is a thing a lot of people are sleeping on. I mean, how often is it in this game that you get a card with 93 pace and 90 passing? I mean, this guy is definitely a playmaker. He's def definitely capable of playing the cam position. So if you're not playing him wide, I would say cam is his second best position because his passing is very nice. He has 90 short passing, 93 vision, 89 curve. He pulls off any pass you can imagine in your head. And he does it with a little bit of flair, a little bit of style. It's really, really nice. His passing all over long distances is very accurate as well. And overall, I gotta give this guy's passing a 9 out of 10. Next, we're gonna talk about his dribbling. And this is probably the most concerning thing about this card. He's six foot two. How many players on this game is six foot two and able to dribble? I mean, most of them cannot dribble in this meta. Um, and this Perez card was actually a surprise. He was very decent on the ball. Despite the fact he only had 82 agility and 80 balance at six foot two, he didn't really feel clunky at any time. He didn't really feel like somebody um, that. I wouldn't want on the ball I mean he felt very smooth on the ball and how he felt I would say is just like slightly worse than Henri you know how Henri is big and he has long legs so he takes big purposeful movements but at the same time it's not smooth and not able to make quick circles like Neymar is that's very much what you're gonna expect out of Perez and he is a little bit worse than Henri but it's a very fair comparison to make um, overall, I gotta give this Paris card an 8.5 out of 10 in dribbling. It's definitely good enough to do the job. However, if he's your best dribbler, he might be in trouble. Finally, we will be talking about his physical, and this is one part of his game that's surprising because he's six foot two, so he expects him to, to really be able to knock defenders off. I mean, that's not the case though. He has 60 strength. He has 49 aggression. So even though he does have a big frame and it does help him shield from time to time, He's not really a target, man. He doesn't fit that role. He's not somebody that should be shielding for too long of a time. His 86 stamina is very nice. He lasts all game. And he has 77 jumping. So at 6'2", if you like somebody that's a bit of a target to lob the ball to, I think he's going to do very well in that regard. Um, so overall, I got to give this guy's physical a 7 out of 10. All right, guys. So what's the final verdict on this card? I think this Perez card is a very decent card. Um, he's definitely usable at the highest levels of the weekend league. But... Is he a good value? I would say no. He plays like a card that um, is good, like probably worth 200000 Um, He does do a lot of things well, though. Don't get me wrong. His passing and pace is very nice. He's able to dribble for a big man. And his attack positioning is class. Um, where he does let you down, though, is he's just not top tier at anything in particular besides passing. I mean, his dribbling is just a little bit below expectations for somebody of this price um his shooting once again if you're paying 400,000 for a player you're gonna want somebody that's more clinical than this card however he's a very good support attacker he's somebody that you can use to set up quicker players on your team and he's very versatile he can play pretty much any position however he does excel um in places where he play makes rather than finishes all right guys so you might be wondering how i'm doing in the weekend league as you guys know um i came out guns a blazing yesterday seven to no and today um I have to say the gameplay was pretty decent. Um, it wasn't perfect. The gameplay is never perfect, don't get me wrong. But last week's gameplay, comparing that to this week's gameplay, I mean, it's like no contest. This week is actually usable, um, or not usable, but playable. 
So we've actually had a decent day today. Um, the 4222 is definitely, definitely doing work. And I think um, the difference between that and the 41212 narrow is that the 41212 narrow had me stifling my own attack. When, when the gameplay was delayed, I just couldn't um, really attack properly in that formation. The 4222 kind of frees things up, but at the same time, doesn't make it too wide. I really enjoyed the, the spacing in the formation itself. So I'm really enjoying the gameplay and we have finished 14 and 4. So we are in prime position for gold one and to make maybe, I'm not going to say nothing, but maybe a push for elite. So yeah, there's that. Hopefully you guys at home had a decent weekend league. Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Um, don't forget to like it, subscribe. Deuces.